Oslo police have told the Reuters news agency that the explosion was caused by a bomb. It's unclear where it was planted, although the tangled wreckage of a car was outside one building. Norway is a member of NATO and has been threatened by al-Qaeda leaders in the past for its involvement in Afghanistan. It's impossible to get close to the destroyed government buildings here in the heart of Oslo. Much of the centre has been cordoned off by police, but these are the deserted streets of a city on a normally crowded Friday night, the capital of a country now much changed. Many Norwegians never saw themselves in the firing line. What they must do now is grapple with quite what this country did to incur these attacks. At least 91 people have now been confirmed dead after a bombing and gun attack targeting the ruling Norwegian Labour Party. Seven people were killed and dozens injured when a suspected car bomb detonated near the offices of the Prime Minister at around 3.30pm on Friday. Just two hours later, at least one gunman wearing a police uniform opened fire on a Labour Party-controlled summer camp, killing at least 80. Like to bring on our team hey, as these awful events unfold. I know you're watching from your side of the pond as well. And we've already heard unconfirmed claims by that group calling themselves the helpers of the global jihad that this attack is a direct response to the presence of Norwegian forces in Afghanistan. Do you think that sounds like a realistic claim, a realistic theory? Kevin, I have written on numerous events, numerous individuals falsely charged, numerous official stories changed by later evidence. Can I give you some examples, both in America and Europe, both World Trade Center bombings in America, we know about 9-11, the evidence is overwhelming that the 9-11 attack itself was a false flag. Most people forget about the 1993 bombing. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of people were convicted uh, I wrote about one, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, the so-called blind Sheikh. He was completely innocent. He got life in prison. He was a former CIA asset. They brought him to America. The Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, Terry Nichols, Timothy McVeigh, a truck bomb in front of the uh, federal building in Oklahoma City. It was later proved that the truck bomb did relatively minor damage. Most of the damage came from internally rigged explosives. Okay. I mean, what are you saying about what's happened here tonight? I mean, details are still very, very sketchy, and I've, you know, uh, this this is happening as people are still under the under the ruins there tonight. So, what do you think has gone on then? Well, of course, uh, the event just happened today. We have no way of knowing, and it, it could be days, it could be weeks before we know anything. But my advice to viewers is always be suspicious, especially about a major attack. I'm sure your viewers remember the, uh, the underground bombing in London, the Madrid train bombing, I believe, uh, the year before or the year after, uh, the mid-2000s. The mid uh, the, the, the early stories were all wrong. Uh, the latest stories conflicted with them, presented different evidence, and it looked like both of those events were false flags. So again, we don't know what happened today. Uh, be very suspicious. And there are clues, Kevin. There are clues. Let's see how fast information comes out. Let's see if people are charged. Let's see exactly what is said, and if too much official information is reported too fast, those are red flags okay. because any event like this could take weeks, maybe months, to really find out what went on. If in the next day or two or a week, we get flooded with information and names named, those, those are red flags that something is very, very wrong. Now the hard questions. How could such a tranquil society as this produce such willful carnage. Well, one reason may be to, to incite fear, to make people believe that even peaceful countries are attacked by these terrorists. Well, did, did terrorists really do this? 
or was it a false flag Let's to incite fear? Let's even tonight, uh, people are going to be regarding Northern Europe, Norway in particular, as a less safe place than it uh, was traditionally considered to be, aren't they? Well, they certainly are. All the more reason to uh, continue the war in Afghanistan. Uh, the uh, new wars that uh, that uh, NATO countries are involved in uh, against Yemen, against Somalia, of course, the Libya operation going on. It's a good reason to say, well, these Muslim terrorists, uh, they'll go after anybody. They'll do it in their own countries. They'll do it in America. They'll do it across Europe. If we, if we don't target these people and get rid of them, they'll keep inciting these incidents and killing innocent people. And the trouble is, Kevin, that people in countries, especially in America, believe this, when in fact, I know for a fact, the stories I've written about, the innocent people charged in America, I've written about dozens of them, falsely charged, all of them Muslims, mostly men, occasionally a woman. I've written about at least five dozen of them. I have yet to find a single guilty person of any crime, but they're all in prison, some of them serving life terms, the public is traumatized, and the imperial wars go on. The they control the media. I mean, uh, they can tell people, well, uh, you may not, not us, like it. Not us. Yeah, you may not like it, but uh, this is how the world works. And, you know, I mean, that, that I just that cannot believe. Uh, Uh, so, <clears throat> terrorism is not an ideology, it's a method. And One man was arrested after being found by police on the island after the attack. He's been named as Anders Bering Brevik. Police have confirmed he has been charged with both attacks. With the suspect in custody, police believe the two attacks were linked. But they say these were self-motivated attacks rather than the work of international militant groups. It's the same person that has been observed in Oslo just before the bomb went off and then was arrested in the vicinity of Otoya. This person was wearing a jumper with a police emblem on it so that he looked like a policeman when he was seen in the government area in Oslo. And the person on the island was wearing the same jumper. It is a crime like no other Norway's police have ever had to deal with. And the questioning of the only suspect is throwing up answers as shocking and baffling as the crime itself. He had, has admitted that he was responsible for the bomb attack and for the killing of those people out on the island. Did he say why? No, he has not given any reason yet, So, but that's a part of the interrogation. He's not known by the police before, uh, so we have not uh, arrested him before or anything like that. Uh, on his website, as you probably have seen, he, he tells himself to be Christian and going to the right. Police searched the suspect's apartment within hours of the shooting, hunting for clues. They're starting to build up a picture of a man with deeply intolerant views towards immigration and what he saw as his government's lax policies. His serious ambition. Among the evidence they're examining is the so-called manifesto advocating extreme right-wing views posted on the internet. Breivik is being held here at Oslo's police headquarters. On Monday, he'll be transferred across town for an appearance at the city's criminal court. What went through this man's head in the lead-up to the deaths of so many innocent people? The first hearing of the alleged gunman, Anders Breivik, is held behind closed doors. Around 93 people are dead. He's not expected to speak that much at the hearing, but there's already a mass of information readily available on the internet. There's a video slideshow of his manifesto, which he calls a declaration of independence. It runs for about 12 minutes. That's in addition to the 1,500 page manifesto. Breivik wanted to start a revolution against multiculturalism. Breivik's lawyer attempted to explain his client's state of mind. So, so he has said that he believed the actions were atrocious, but that in his head they were necessary. He is willing to explain himself in a court hearing on Monday, to explain what he has done and why. Norway is a small country, but we are a proud country. And we are all very close, especially in times like this. And I think that all Norwegians feel very close to those who are 
uh, victims of uh, the violence. What we mustn't do, and what is unjust, is to say these extremists are the Islamic norm, whereas our extremists in our faith, say Christianity or Judaism or Buddhism, are, 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 are oddballs.